Welcome back. Today we're just going to be using a few very simple supplies. Tape, scissors, cardboard, and yarn to create a wide variety of products. Now, or projects, however you'd like to put it. The tape is optional. It's only needed for one particular project. You can use any kind of yarn that you want. This is a uh, worsted weight singles yarn. This is a bulky two-ply. Um, there's a wide variety of yarns. This is a super bulky that would be nice. Another kind of bulky that would be good. Um, this is a puffy, bulky yarn that would be nice. And this is a, a worsted weight acrylic yarn. And you're going to make your choice of projects. It could be a coaster, it could be a placemat, it could be a pouch, or it could even be um, a hot pad. But if it's a hot pad, I wouldn't recommend using acrylic yarn. Uh, if you're placing a really hot pan on a acrylic yarn, it's going to melt because it's plastic. But you could even make... A mug rug or a coaster you could consider it a rug for a dollhouse uh, you could consider it a uh, cover for a toy car anything that you want it to be so use your imagination and have fun with it but I'm going to show you the quick and easy process to get started so we will start with this one as I said this can be a mug rug or this kind of cardboard can make be made into a pouch as well so they both start the same way. I'm going to take care of this extra edge over here just by cutting it off. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to cut uneven, an uneven number of cuts on one side and an even number of cuts on the other side. The number of uneven cuts has to be one more than the number of even cuts. This is also a great chance if you have kids at home uh, STEAM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. So you can combine arts and mathematics and even engineering and have them figure out why it has to be uneven number on one side and even on the other. Can you do it with even numbers and what's the problem? So it's fairly small. So I'm going to cut five on this side. Now you can be as exact if, as you want. If you want to measure in half an inch make a line cut up to that half inch line so on and so forth if you want to make sure that you get exactly quarter inch cuts in between or I actually recommend between half an inch and an inch unless you're using really fine yarn but if you're using really fine yarn there's other considerations so three four and five on this side so then we'll turn it around and do, let's see, one, two, three, and four on this side. So the next thing you're going to do is we're essentially weaving. So we're going to create what's called the weft yarn. I beg your pardon, that's a mistake. The warp yarn. Now the warp yarns are the ones that stay still. I'm going to take a length, just a random length, and then cut it off. I'm going to take one end, starting on the end that has more cuts, the one that has five. I'm going to take about two inches of tail and leave it hanging down the back. And snug it down in there, in the slit. Take the warp yarn. Come up to where the notch is, put the yarn down the notch. I'm going to run the yarn behind that notch and up the next one so that there's just a little loop there. When you're doing this, you don't want to pull so tight that your cardboard is bowing out, but you don't want it to be so loose that it just flops over. Like, you don't want it to be like that. You want it to be just tiniest bit of tension. And then that's going to come up the next notch. It's going to go around the back and up this notch. 
Okay, hang on. There we go. Up that notch. Up there. There. Down. There. There. And since there's only one slot there, we're going to snug it in there. Okay? So. If you're going to be weaving a mug rug, this is where you would stop. Okay? You would tape this down and be all done. All right? If you're going to weave a pouch, I am going to show you the difference in that. So for a pouch, since we're going to be folding this in half, and I'll show you that in a minute, this has to end about the middle. So, because you're going to need even on one side, uneven on the other. If you're weaving a mug rug, just snug your warp up in this slot and tape it down on the back and be done with it. If you're weaving a pouch, you need to fold your uh, loom, which is basically what this is, in half. Okay? Flatten it down on the bottom and then take your last warp thread and cutting a notch right at the middle, you tuck, tuck your last warp thread in that notch and then tape it down. Once you have both of the warp threads taped down, which is what we're going to be doing right now, just with a little piece of tape so they don't go anywhere. We'll snip the extra tail off of this. Once they're both taped down, you're going to want to tape the loom together. I like to put the tape across the top so that these warp threads aren't going to be going anywhere. So that's really easy to do. Take the piece of tape, put it across the top, Fold it over, and then I'll snip off the extra. If you're worried about it, you can tape down the sides of the loom, but it isn't necessary. Okay, so this way you have five warp threads on one side and four on the other. So to get started weaving, we're just going to take your warp thread, your weft thread, I beg your pardon, the horizontal ones are the weft, and start going over and under the warp threads. So I'm going to use this as the tail and this is the the longer part is the working yarn. So you can see I went under, over, under, over, under. So since I went under this one, when I turn your, the loom around, because doing a pouch you have to weave both sides, and I did under this last one, so I'm going to go over this warp thread under this one, the second one, and the fourth one. So just go over, pick up the fourth and the second, and pull this through. And since I have the tail still hanging over, I am going to, going to pull it to the back, to this side of the loom, and just weave it opposite of what I just wove the first thread, okay? And just let it sit there because you're going to go back around. Now, this one was going under, so we're going to ignore what the tail is doing. So this was under this warp thread, so when I turn it over, I need to be going over this warp thread. And you can also see that it's the opposite of what I just did with my first pick, my first go around. So this is gonna be going over, under, over, under, over. If you're doing the exact same thing with each warp thread each time, you're not actually weaving, you're just kind of messing around with thread or yarn. So you wanna make sure that what you did the last time, you're doing the opposite this time. So I went over this last warp thread. So when I go over here, I need to go under this first warp thread here. So the first and third, and yes, the tail is going over under the third one, but we're going to ignore the tail and it's going to get squished down. And you just keep doing this around and around. The biggest thing to keep in mind when you're doing a pouch 
is that when you push your warp threads down, after you get about five or six uh, rounds in, you're going to actually push them all the way down to the bottom because they're going to need to cover this bottom up. So it's going to take a while to get this woven. Making sure that everything is pushed to the bottom is extremely important. You can get all the way done. I spent two hours weaving on this and it was all fluffed up to the top. You can see where I accidentally went through it with the needle. You can use a tapestry needle if you'd like, but you do not have to. And I had everything way up here to the top and you can see where I was doing a little bit of weaving up there. But the reality is when I pushed a little bit, everything just pushed all the way to the bottom. And I'm really only about halfway done. If I had left it the way that it was, I could have taken it off of the loom and it would have looked frankly horrible. I have a pouch here. I used some glue to stiffen it thinking that that would help. But you can see I didn't weave nearly enough even though it was all the way up to the top and looked good because you can see how much of the warp threads are showing through. So you have to push everything down and keep going. It takes some time, but the results are amazing. It's just gorgeous. Project that you can do, and again, you can use any yarn, any size, anything, is you can take these same techniques and you can cover over a box. I have a Splenda box, and this is actually the second time I'm shooting this video. So that's why this is already pre-done and I don't have another box. But what you can do is you can cut the notches, making sure that at least one that one side has an odd number. Everything else can be even, but one side has to have an odd number in order to warp and weave properly. And you just use the warps uh, over every notch. The fun thing about the Splenda box is because we're going to be weaving on the box and just keeping the box as the finished piece, you tape, you push down and you tape down the notches and that holds the warps in place. Because you can see the notches are there and as you push down, it covers over them and when you tape down, it keeps them steady. So what you would do is I started on the long ends, warping it just like everything else. And then when I worked on the short ends, I cut another piece and started warping the short ends. And as, as, as I was warping, I wove the this version, the long side pieces. I warped the short side piece, wove the short side pieces into those warps so that it creates an intermeshed bottom. You can then tape these if you would like, if you want to make sure that you're not weaving. Because unlike the pouch where you had to push it all the way to the bottom, for this, you're going to stop weaving right where the edge is. So if you tape, then the um, warps can't go any further. So to do that, all you would do would be to slap a piece of tape down there. I'm going to use scissors because I pulled that out too far. And then as you start weaving, the warps will stop where the tape starts. The weft, I'm sorry, I keep getting that wrong. The weft, which is the horizontal threads, will stop where the tape starts. So when you push down, you're only gonna push down to the bottom of the box. And this is a great way to A, re reuse and upcycle a box, and B, to get a little bit creative with your weaving. You can make it look like anything that you want it to be, and it will be a full, fully functional box when you're done. And as I was saying, you can just take the tape, push these pieces down, and then tape them down on the inside of the box and do that all the way around and everything will be... Please message on Facebook and I will get back to you as soon as I can if you have any questions or concerns. I look forward to hearing from you and please post your projects. I would love to see them. I will see you next week. And until then, if you're an introvert, please check on your extrovert.